Let us bless ourselves in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear people of God, today is the sixth day of the Novena. And our theme for today is Christ building one humanity. Christ's mission was to reconcile the world back to the Father building that one humanity, all of us as one. Saint Ignatius too strive to further this mission of Christ. So let us pray in this Eucharistic celebration that we all may be one, and especially we remember our families. We know that many families are falling apart because of the various temptation that we see in this world. We remember and pray for them that the spirit of love unity and understanding might grow in them and thus be one. And for the times we have been persons who have brought about division rather than unity, let us ask God's pardon and mercy. Together we shall say, I, I confess, confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy on your people gathered here. Christ, have mercy on your people gathered here. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Thus said the Lord to me, Go and buy a linen waistcloth, and put it on your loins, and do not dip it in water. So I bought a waistcloth, according to the word of the Lord, and put it on my loins. And the word of the Lord came to me a second time. Take the waistcloth 
which you have bought, which is upon your loins, and arise, go to the Euphrates, and hide it there in a cleft on the rock. So I went and hid it by the rock at the Euphrates as the Lord had commanded me. And after many days, the Lord said to me, Arise, go to the Euphrates, and take from, the, from there the waste cloth which I commanded you to hide there. Then I went to the Euphrates and dug, and I took the waste cloth from the place where I had hidden it. And behold, the waste cloth was spoiled and it was good for nothing. Then the word of the Lord came to me. Thus says the Lord, Even so will I spoil the pride of Judah and the great pride of Jerusalem. This evil people who refuse to hear my words, who stubbornly follow their own heart and have gone after other gods to serve them and worship them, shall be like this waste cloth, which is good for nothing. For as the waste cloth clings to the loins of a man, so I made the whole house of Israel and the whole house of Judah cling to me, says the Lord, that they might be for me a people, a name, a praise, and a glory, but they would not listen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Responsorial psalm, let our response be, You forget the God who fathered you. Kindly repeat. You, you forget, forget the, the God, God who fathered you. you. You forget the rock who begot you, unmindful now of the God who fathered you. The Lord has seen this and in his anger cast off his sons and his daughters. Your response, you, for you forget, forget the, the God, God who fathered, fathered you. you. I shall hide my face from them, he says, and see what becomes of them. For they are a deceitful brood, children with no loyal loyalty in them. Your response? You, you forget, forget the God who fathered you. They have roused me to jealousy with what is no God. They have angered me with their begins of nothing. I then will rouse them to jealousy with what is no people. I will anger them with an empty-headed nation. Your response? You, you forget, forget the God, God who fathered you. Kindly rise for the gospel acclamation. King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, alleluia. King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, alleluia. King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hireling and not a shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hireling and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. As the father knows me and I know the father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, and I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will heed my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear people of God, 
I have changed the gospel, that is, I have taken the gospel of John to suit the theme of today. And we shall look at what the Lord is trying to tell us to the theme of today, that is, Christ building one humanity. I'm sure you might have heard this punchline during the IPL with regard to the advertisement of King Fisher. Divided by teams, united by King Fisher. Yes, all of us are divided. We are divided based on our caste, religion, ethnicity, geographical groups. So there is always division. We also see a similar division in our own families. Some think that they are better or superior than the other. And so this type of division of focusing just on myself, I, me, myself syndrome. So all of us go through this experience of division. But what is the Lord telling us? Our God does not make any distinction. He does not make any division. In the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16, Jesus reminds us that he was sent for a particular mission. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And further on, it goes to say that the world might be saved through him. So what we see here in this passage that God does not make any distinction. There is no one particular group that God loves. There is not one particular section of people that God loves. But God loves everyone and he wants to save everyone. So Christ's ministry began with this very mission of building one humanity. We see in the Gospels when we read and reflect, we realize that Christ met people, proclaimed the kingdom message, he healed, he spent time with them. He did not make any distinction. He was with everyone at all times. But yet there was a difference because people, like we have just heard in the first reading, people having their own shortcomings and trying to make groups and division. In the time of Jesus, these differences were there. There were those who were focusing on themselves or on their little group and trying to propagate their own way as the best way. And here we have Jesus who challenges them. He challenges them to leave their old ways, leave their evil ways, leave their discriminatory ways and come together to be one. And in Matthew chapter 5 verse 44, Jesus reminds us that we are to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. And why did Jesus say so? That is because he knew that they too will one day change and they will listen to his voice and they will be one flock as we have just heard in the Gospel of John. And in doing so, Jesus lays down his life. And so with laying down his life, Jesus' mission did not come to an end. This mission continues even today. In fact, this call of Christ was heard by one man, St. Ignatius of Loyola, to carry forward this very mission of building one humanity. St. Ignatius of Loyola, along with his companions, founded the Society of Jesus and labored in the vineyard of the Lord to build one humanity. And the Jesuits of the Goa province take this very mission very seriously. It is reflected in their mission statement, which says, call to build human communities. We also see it very well and vivid in their apostolic endeavors. However, building one human community is not just the responsibility of the priests, brothers and nuns. Each one of us are called to build one humanity. I am sure during this time of pandemic, many of you have reached out to others, making no distinction or discrimination. You might have even read, heard or watched on television how people have gone out of their way to reach out to people in need. This is what we are called to. We are called to share, 
a call to help, a call to celebrate together. It's only then we'll be able to build one humanity. That was the dream of Jesus Christ for each one of us. And we who live here on earth are called to fulfill it. But however, in case any one of you feel that you can be more effective in proclaiming Christ, building one humanity as a priest, as a brother, as a nun, you're welcome to discern your call and definitely will be there to guide you. So let us pray in this Eucharistic celebration that just as Christ labored to build one humanity, just as Ignatius followed in his footsteps to build one humanity, we too, in turn, work towards building this humanity. Amen. My dear people of God, let us all rise and put forth some of our prayers and petition before the Lord, wherein we ask God to help us to unite, to build one humanity. Let your response be, Saint Ignatius, pray for us. Saint Ignatius, pray for us. That the wounded humanity, prejudiced by barriers of language, race, and religion, may know the joy of codependence and coexistence, that we may be receptive and creative in truth and goodness to build a global family in these times, that we may appreciate the prayer of Jesus, that all of us may proclaim the good news. Let us pray through the intercession of St. Ignatius of Loyola. St. Ignatius, pray for us. That our traditional hurts and animosity through forgiveness and healing may be replaced with the joy of friendship and harmony. In Christ, we may be known as people who build bridges of a new humanity. Let us pray through the intercession of St. Ignatius of Loyola. St. Ignatius, pray for us. That our dialogue with other faiths and beliefs may open the doors to a global family rooted in justice, dignity, and harmony. That our concern and charity may be a preferential option for the poor and the needy. Let us pray through the intercession of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Saint Ignatius, pray for us. Let us pray for our own personal intention. Let us also remember the people of Assam and Bihar who are suffering because of the flood. Many of them have lost their lives, their livelihood, their homes. That the government and all other authorities who are in charge of reaching out to them may make no discrimination but reach out to the needy so that they begin to rebuild their lives. God our Father, these are some of our prayers which are voiced aloud, but there are a number of prayers deep down in our heart which we place along with this bread and wine on this altar. As you transform this bread and wine into the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, transform our lives too, that we may strive to build one humanity. We make these prayers to Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, my brethren, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, this most sacred mysteries may sanctify a present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your, your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them up to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Fount of all holiness, make holy therefore the gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took the bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Philip Neri our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostle and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, merit to be co heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours 
forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Since we cannot receive Jesus at this moment sacramentally, let us make an act of spiritual communion and experience the presence of Jesus who is in us who dwells in our hearts, who abides in us. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment, receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they shall see God. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Take the Novena in honor of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Loving God, in these difficult times of the coronavirus, we know that you walk with us and strengthen us for the journey ahead. During this Novena in memory of St. Ignatius of Loyola, we ask you to make our hearts like the heart of your Son, Jesus. Give us your Holy Spirit so that we bring hope to those who are struggling or afraid. We place ourselves in your hands, O Lord, with our joys and our hopes, our works and our sufferings, all that we are and all that we do. Today, we specially ask you to bless our families. We also remember those families which are falling apart because of the various evils that they are caught up in. We also pray for our own personal intention. Bless us, gracious God, and help us to strive for love that is shown in service. May we work to build up one human family for your greater glory. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, pray, pray for us sinners, sinners now Amen. and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it, As it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Oh, man.